Hello all. Uh, this demonstration is of the TTA test, the Total Titratable Acid Test. Now this test is used for assessing uh, the different uh, acid contents in sourdoughs and in sourdough finished products. What I'm going to demonstrate today is how you ass assess the uh, acid levels in a sourdough. So here I've got two samples. Um, the first one, um, which is an all white flour sample, uh, is made with a, a Levan culture. Um, so specially prepared, um, and that's been fermenting for a, a number of days um, and is ready to use in our sourdough. Um, the next one is a uh, part white, white dough, part rye flour, uh, spontaneous levan or sourdough uh, that has been generated by uh, Richard and uh, we're going to test that alongside the cultured levan uh, to see what the differences are. Okay. So the first part of the uh, uh, process is to measure out our samples. So we need 15 grams of sample in order to do this test. So we simply set, set our little glass uh, beaker onto scales, tear it, and then we need 15 grams of our sample nicely measured into our beaker. This can be quite tricky, but you need to get it very accurate. So be very careful with the last bits. That's 15.01, so I'll just remove some from that. So I get it exactly right, it's within 0.1 of a gram. Again, a little bit more. So that's my first sample. Um, so I would do exactly the same for the second sample. Um, so measure it up and I'll do that shortly and you'll see the results in a few moments. However, what I need to do next is uh, to this sample that I've just produced, I need to add Um, as it says, 100 millilitres of distilled water. Okay, so I've got my distilled water in a squeezy bottle, and so I'll start by simply taking the top off and pouring some in. I need 100, so when I get close, I'll use the squirter. Quite close. Okay, there's my what hundred mil. I then need to take some parafilm. Now, uh, this is like a paraffin wax type sub substrate. And um, what I do is I peel the parafilm off the backing. This can be quite tricky, especially if you're using, if you've got gloves on, but that's why it's better to prepare your samples before you actually start the test.
again as I said it can be tricky so a bit of patience with it When you eventually get the stuff off the sheet, what you should find is a sort of stretchable material that could then go over the top of your container, which seals it tight. Put your hand over it and then over the sink. Give it a shake to make sure that that sample is fully distributed. You shouldn't see any uh, bits on the bottom. And then you can take the parafilm off. And it's ready to test. So the next thing we do is we uh, take the pH of the sample. But the sample is now, uh, we don't want it to all settle out to the bottom of our sample container. So what we do is we take our sample, we place it on the black uh, mechanical spinner, we put it into the centre and then we add one of these little magnetic stirrers. If we pop that in and then turn the machine on, what happens is the magnet inside starts to spin and that agitates the sample and makes sure it's constantly turning. Now we want to leave that for about a couple of minutes um, in order to stabilise uh, for the uh, experiment. So while that's happening I'll prepare the next sample. Okay so we're on to the next part of the process. So that means that I have to wear my safety equipment. So I need to wear my safety spectacles and I need to wear gloves. The reason for this is because in the burettes are, is a solution of one molar NaOH, NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide. That's hard for me to say. Um, so sodium hydroxide is what you also use to clean out uh, drains with. So it's a very powerful alkali. Okay, so we don't want to get that on us, uh, and therefore we must use the right PPE. So I have my PPE on now, uh, and I've got my gloves and my safety specs. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Uh, Measure, first of all, measure the pH. Now, the pH is our sort of starting point for measuring uh, sourdoughs, but it's certainly not any use on its own. And that's because the different acids within uh, sourdoughs have totally different pHs. So we could potentially have a sour, two sourdough samples that measure at the same pH, but one has got twice the amount of acid than the other one due to the different types of either lactic or acetic acid within that sourdough. So, however, our starting point is to uh, measure the pH. So we take our pH meter, we make sure it's turned on, and we take our pH probe, we rinse it off using our squeezy bottle, and then that goes into our Uh, sourdough container um, and we give it a few minutes just to settle should take about 30 seconds really until we got a steady number and then we need to record not just the uh, pH because pH is dependent on temperature so we need to record the pH 
and the temperature. So, my reading is now stable, so I'm going to record that at uh, 4.01 at 25.0 degrees C. Now, what we then need to do is use the sodium hydroxide to neutralise that pH back to a value of 6.6. .6. Okay? So we do that very slowly by first checking that our burette is filled up to the correct level. The meniscus, the bottom of the sort of curve um, for in the burette, needs to be at the zero mark. And then what we're going to do is just very slowly add, say, a bit, of, a little bit at a time, watching our pH meter. There's a there's a, a lag in this test, so you must wait, add some, and then wait for the reaction to take place. So, so there we got quite a big change, so it's moved to 4.25 and the reaction will get quicker and quicker um, as it gets closer. So you need to, when you get close to that 6.6 .6, we need to be very accurate. So it's going up, we've already almost reached 5 now. Okay, and very close to the end, 6.52, uh, and then just going to add it a drop at a time. So a single drop and there we go so one single drop has done it now the way we read that now is by reading down the burette so that I have deposited 14.5 milliliters which I record 14.5 milliliters gives me 6.6 .6 pH at the 25 degrees C. So once that's done, what we would then do is uh, swap all our samples over, um, being very careful to top this back up and reset it to the meniscus at zero so we can do our second sample. So here I've got my second sample, and this is the spontaneous uh, sample uh, that includes the rye flour. Um, so again, I've had it spinning for about two, two and a half minutes. I'm going to test the pH first. So again, apply that, make sure that I read that sample and the temperature that it's uh, being uh, that it's at. It does take a few minutes normally. So if you remember our first sample had a pH of 4.01. So and this sample has a pH of 4.01. To three at twenty five point zero degrees C. Right. So now I can start uh, adding my um, sodium hydroxide solution. So once again, I'm watching my um, pH meter, and I'm trying to get to that target level of six point six, six point, right, six point. Let me just check. 
Um, uh, yeah, 6.6, .6, I was right. So going up now, 4.3. Four point six five point one five point six so I'm going to slow it down now just adding it drop by drop couple of drops at a time. I've gone over six now. Remember, it will change much faster uh, when I'm closer to that 6.6. .6. So do not rush the last few drops. There's my 6.5, so one or two more drops should do it, one at a time. Six point five seven. Six point six. Okay, so again, reading my meniscus, so that's taken me to uh, 9.0 milliliters. Okay, so um, so my results were for our uh, culture, special cultured sourdough, 4.01 pH at 25 degrees C and I used 14.5 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide to neutralize it. The second sample, which had a slightly higher pH, 4.23 um, uh, on the pH at 25 degrees C, but significantly less sodium hydroxide used, so only 9.0 millilitres, which would suggest to me that the second sample, the spontaneous sourdough sample, um, uh, has a much uh, has much less physical acid within it um, due to the blend of bacteria that's been produced in that sample. Okay. Now that's how you measure those samples. So what I can do now uh, is finish off the experiment and clean up after myself, remembering that this burette still has dangerous sodium hydroxide in it. So first I'll remove my pH meter and give that a clean before it goes back into its standard holder. I'm then going to take very carefully my sample. This is neutralised now, so this is safe. However, if there's any drips on here, it could eat through our machine. So we're going to put our little plastic tray back on there. And then the little stirrer that is in here we want to get that out before we tip the rest of the sample down the sink. So we use our little um, grabbing magnet, run it up the side, and as you can see, our little sample has come out, our little stirrer, and we can safely clean that on its own.
The rest of it goes down the sink, lots of clean water, and then washed out thoroughly and dried for the next sample to be used. And that is how you do a total titratable acid test on a sourdough sample. Thank you.